All right, joining us in the studio is uh, Jason for the latest in our Korean demand K contents. Jason, good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to be here. SJ, how are you? Doing all right. I'm a bit tired, but uh... <laughs> too much partying. <laughs> too much partying. If you cook all, you know, helping with a, a newborn, a party. Yes, it is a party. It is a party at your house. Yes, it's a different kind of it's a poop that twenty-four party. seven party, right? <sighs> It's yes. It's not. The, <laughs> it's not a party that I signed up for. But uh, oh, really? <laughs> well, no. Actually, Tell me more. <laughs> actually, 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 I did sign up for it. I didn't think that it was going to be this tough. But uh, <laughs> anyways, you enjoying the spring weather these days? You're looking very springy today. Although it's more summer nowadays. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's getting quite warm outside. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, you know, obviously the spring. With the spring weather, you get the yellow sand, you know, the hang yeah, sand, yeah, which yeah, yeah. Uh, is is not welcome. But uh, yeah, I mean, we had uh, some quite a lot of rain uh, over yeah. the uh, well this week over the holiday. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, as I, I looked at the weather forecast today, today, and it's pretty much sunny now for the next like what ten days. So I'm very happy with very pleasant temperatures. So okay. May is my favorite time of year. Is it really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, May is kind of like when it's just before it gets really, really hot, right? Oh, yeah. Well, June, the end of June, that's when the humidity yeah, starts getting yeah. incredibly oppressive and you just want to sit yeah. in an air-conditioned theater, in air-conditioned cinema. Yeah, and escape from the heat. That's right. I mean, that's, that's one of the good things. But we have been talking about how there was still uh, the cinema industry struggling to recover since the pandemic yep. and things like that. We actually have some really good news on this front, but... We're going to start things off with the Cannes Film Festival that kicked off. Uh, there's a Korean film in the midnight screening section. What's the midnight screening section? Uh, yeah, well, this is, as as a lot of our listeners will know, the Cannes Film Festival is one of the most renowned yes. f- events in world cinema. Uh, and it has a long history. And, you know, the festival in its main competition tends to screen, you know, auteurs or art house cinema. Now, in the mm. midnight screening section, that's a section that's focused primarily on commercial genre fare. So, okay, okay. you know, for critics who are getting a bit tired of the, you know, the heavy hitting films, they can go and have, you know, enjoy a bit of escapism through, uh, you know, these uh, genre titles. And um, yeah, that's where Korean films have actually done quite well. They've done well in competition, but they've also done quite well in the midnight screening section. Uh, and we've had Korean films in that section every year since Train to Train to Busan oh, wow. uh, in 2016. You know, there was one year where we had actually two Korean films uh, in that section. I think that was The Villainous and The Merciless, I think 2017. So, um, yeah, and this year we've got um, the veteran sequel, I, The Executioner. Oof. So, you know, Yoo Sung Won's kind of uh, enormously successful movie, um, that sold well over 10 million admissions. Uh, it starts uh, Hwan Jong Min as this detective. And basically, yeah, I mean, he's back. I mean, I don't know too much about the film, except, you know, he faces a new villain. Uh, I, I, I saw the word crisis in, a, in the synopsis. Um, and uh, yeah, Jong Jae In is also starring in it. And uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see what, what uh, you know whether the film is I'm sure it's pretty decent I mean it's Yoo Sung Won Yoo Sung Won made yeah, yeah, yeah. films such as uh, Escape from Mogadishu Smugglers you know Milsu and uh, actually those were released during the pandemic and, uh, Which means the numbers weren't pretty that good, weren't, weren't that good, right? Uh, s- no, Smugglers is good. Uh, that sold what four million tickets or something like that. Uh, Escape from Mogadishu that was like right in the middle of the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. COVID, COVID yeah pandemic that we all want to forget about that that didn't do very well but uh but n- nothing was doing well at that point so uh but yeah that's a good film and he, but the thing is he was releasing films when you know other directors distributors just didn't want to have titles out in the cinema yeah, 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 it's yeah. too scary because yeah. people want to stay at home but he was determined to make it happen and uh, so we had two films that were released and uh, so yeah i'm very happy for him uh, and i hope it does well uh, Veteran was such a good movie. I just did not remember Hong Jung Min playing a cop in that because every time we like Hong Jung Min, like we think of him as a gangster, right? But uh, yeah, he's played a gangster in what New World or Shinsegae. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. That's what I was. Okay, okay, I confused that with uh, 
veteran and Shinsuke get completely different movies <laughs> when you're right. Still, he, he was also in A Bittersweet Life as well, wasn't he? Back in 2005. Oh, that's a good movie too. Yeah. With, uh, with, uh, what's his name? Evil, that's, Evil that's, yeah, that's a famous scene in The Ice Rink. You remember? Where he, ice Rink? Isn't it Ice Rink? Yeah, there's... Anyway, I... Oh, the ice ring. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. That's remember where that. he gets his, uh, well, it's, something oh, happens to him. It's I, gruesome. <laughs> it is very gruesome. Uh, so not many other Korean films in the con this year? No, it's a bit light. Uh, interesting. Uh, I think it reflects the fact that the auteurs are busy working on projects that are not completed. So, sure. you know, as I mentioned, you've got the main competition. And basically, there are a handful of Korean directors that ten- there are, that can get films that are invited to that section. You've got Bong Joon-ho, you've got Pak Chang-ook, you've got... Uh, Hong Sang Su, you've got Yi Chang Dong, and then you've got Im Sang Su, and that's pretty much it. I mean, Na Hong Jin could get into competition, although he's he, his three films, The Chaser, um, what else is, uh, and The Wailing, of course, screened mm. in, and Yellow Sea as well, which was his second film. They all screened in Cannes, although not in competition. Uh, and he's got a film that potentially could have been ready, but I think you know his films can take twelve months, like twelve months or longer in post production. That was true of um, the, yeah, no, he's he's a perfectionist. So his new film stars Michael Fassbender and uh, Elise, uh, his wife actually, Alicia Vikander. So uh, that's a Korean film, but it's got some you know an international cast. It's called Hope. Uh, so that wrapped up last August. So clearly that's not in Cannes. So yeah. That, so not much in a way, although there is a documentary called Walking in the Movie by Kim Liang, uh, which I think screened in Cannes today or yesterday. Um, and it explores the life of Kim Dong-ho, who is the founder of the Busan International Film Festival. Oh, really? Yeah. So he, he has he's basically traveled the world um, to film festivals. He's written books and mm-hmm. he's enormously... Um, respective figure in the industry so um yeah so he's there in can um and so yeah not much in the way of can uh, not much in the way of korean films in can this year which is a bit unfortunate but you can't have you know half a dozen korean films <laughs> in can every year yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so uh you know next year maybe we'll have you know quite a few more three or four two two three yeah uh, let's talk about the Roundup, the latest installment of the Roundup series, uh, Punishment, right? That's number four. Uh, we, we, we saw this happen. Uh, they, they... Well, you know what, actually? Uh, there were some some concerns uh, when really? it opened. Well, because the, word, the initial reaction was a bit kind of meh. But actually, I think I came on here and I said, you know, it's going to be fine. I, I had a really good time with it. And sh- sure enough, audiences have really enjoyed it. And it hit 10 million admissions in no time. Yeah. And it's the first kind of triple, uh, first triple 10 million uh, admission franchise in Korean cinema history. So there you go. It's, it's secured its place. The crazy thing with this is, again, I didn't watch three and four. I saw one and two. Number one was such a good movie, and they weren't able to hit 10 million, right? But it was the well, success of that that led to number two, three, and four to hit 10 million. But you know, we actually mentioned Veteran, and Veteran yeah. actually, I think, laid the kind of the groundwork for um, the the Outlaws, which is it's called this confusing. It's called in Korean, it's called Bom de Dushi. Yes. Uh, the first film was called The Outlaws, and then the sequel was called The Roundup, and now it's called The Roundup franchise right right right, right. So even though that wasn't what That's it was right. called in the first place but in veteran that was a kind of action comedy mm-hmm. and it was so successful and what well, the first thing i thought of when i watched the outlaws was actually oh this feels a lot like veteran and i think madong sot or don lee even had a cameo in veteran uh where he plays a bit of an action yeah role in that so i think that f- I- i'll have to go back and watch veteran again but it-, it does it does feel like it kind of laid some of the groundwork for for the roundup films and i think uh don lee uh ma dong suk became the first korean actor i think to, to star can we say star star in six movies that hit 10 10 million trying to busan yeah, he's been in train to boost that well no yeah along with the gods as well along with the gods yeah right two of them this uh we yeah, he's mainly in the second one though. But, but yeah. he come he comes out a bit in the, yeah. the first one, and I think they counted that. <laughs> and then the three, <laughs> I saw the news. I saw the news. Yeah, and... no, he, you're right. He is the f- well. The thing is, it's it's always a bit because he comes out, ju- he comes out at the end, right? Like briefly, he comes out at the end. I believe it was what in the long of the gods. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, first yeah, one. The, yeah. And then the second one, well, he plays a big role in the second film, right? Uh, and then yeah, so Train to Be Sound, Long with the Gods, and then you've got the the three, the three. roundup films, six. 
But yeah, the point I was trying to make is you, you've got other actors who've been like Odal Su, who's been in countless kind of 10 million admission films. Oh, that's but right. But he's more of a supporting actor, yeah, right? Yeah, Whereas yeah, Madong yeah, yeah. Sok now is more of a lead. Although Madong Sok actually, you know, he entered the industry as, as a kind of character actor, as a supporting actor. He did. And that's the big surprise here is that I remember his like, man, what was that, the movie uh, Perfect Game? Uh, the baseball. Yeah, it's movie. a good film. Yeah. Right? Really yeah. good. And he comes out as this, like, you know, he's kind of a side character. He's just I guy. like his character in that. In I love it. Man, I almost cried. <laughs> that scene when he hit the home run, I almost cried. I almost yeah, cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good uh, film. Let's move on uh, because tomorrow. Uh, yeah, is so to more, more uh, serious stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, May 18th, right? Uh, this is uh, the Gwangju the democratization movement, uh, which led the then military government uh, to do uh, terrible things uh, to the people. Um, this week, uh, we have uh, some movies about uh, the May 18th uh, democratization movements, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. So uh, this is a, a very tragic uh, event uh, in Korean history, which mm-hmm. left a profound scar. It's hard to overstate this. Um, and, uh, you know, I teach Korean cinema to my students uh, and uh, I always I always talk about Gwangju uh, because I think it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it is, it's truly tragic. But at yeah. the same time, uh, you know, the 1980s, uh, this is the, this is the era that ushered in, you know, democracy in Korea. And coming from the UK, which has one of the oldest democracies in the world, I th- I, one thing I've always admired about Korea is how, how it's become, you know, a very mature democracy in a very short space of time. We saw that mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm. recent elections, um, and so yeah. So the two two films that I've I've kind of picked for for you know looking at uh, the the Kwangju uprising or May eighteenth, I picked t- one commercial film and one independent film. And the commercial the film, Taxi Driver, of course, is Taxi Driver. <laughs> Everyone knows it's Taxi Driver. And I, I mean, you know, um, I, this is a movie that I don't think really needs an introduction because everyone knows this movie but yeah it's directed by Chang Hoon um, it, you know as the title suggests it follows a taxi driver played by Song Gang Ho who takes a foreign ju- journalist played by Thomas Kretschmann uh, down to Kwanju to cover the uprising it's based on a true story because yeah. uh, his uh, the, the journalist's his real name is Jürgen uh, Hinspita who if I pronounced it correctly and um, he his footage uh, actually made it out of Kwangju and yeah, was, yeah. was aired throughout the world um and i went to see i went to see this movie actually at this press screening in seoul at the 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 coex and i remember it still vividly because i sat there and there was a journalist next to me and he was weeping he really had a huge effect on him um and it and so i went to see it again with my wife at a local cinema and it was just incredibly emotional to watch it in a you know, in two different settings. One was a more kind of, you know, I, I was surrounded by journalists and people from the industry. Uh, and then I was with the public and, the, you know, the reaction was, yeah, quite similar, just vividly moved. Uh, and, yeah, it sold over 12 million tickets. Uh, and they actually they found out who the real taxi driver was uh, in real life as a result of yeah. the film's yeah. popularity. His name was uh, Kim Sabok. Uh, and sadly, uh, they found it. They managed to track down his son, and sadly, he passed away with cancer in 1984. So, um, yeah, Just four years after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awful. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, just a, you know, and a very, very moving film. And I think some criticised it in the industry. Uh, some critics criticised it for kind of commercialising Kwangju because it is, you know, very much a commercial film it's it's very much uh, centered on this character played by Song Song Gang-ho who's just able to kind of play these characters oh, he absolutely. has this has this, um, this this incredible ability to connect with his audience yeah and you see that in the attorney as well uh, or piano in and uh, so yeah it, it's reliant on emotion the staging so yes it does it is a commercial film you know let's but be it's, honest it's a good, but, but, but it's but it good is, but it is a, it is very good yeah. and it is very affecting and it you know ultimately succeeded um in you know moving um you know millions of cinema goes oh man there was a movie that i watched um <sighs> some years ago this was like back in 2007 i believe Oh, there you oh, go. Hwang 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 this is what I watched. I don't like that film. I'm uh, brutally honest. <laughs> <laughs> Why? This was like, I mean, 
this is not a good movie. It's I, not a good movie. I'm sorry. I, I, I that that to me was it was it was commercial. Why, why it was, was why was it because it was I, too commercial? Oh, a it was too commercial, and also the lighting was terrible, and it was just over. It was it was melodramatic, and it was just uh, it just didn't feel authentic. I mean, it just. I mean, you have to you have to find that. I to be fair, I have not seen it in years, so I'd have to revisit it. Not like can, can want I be to. perfectly honest with but, you though? Yeah. I think I enjoyed it more because I was watched the person I was watching with back then. It was 2007, you know, young me. Yeah, yeah. New well, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so maybe if I go back to it, maybe if I revisit it, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, maybe I was, you know, I was too harsh. What, you know, no, I, I understand but, what you mean by kind of uh, commercial, it's, too commercial. Yeah, it kind of goes yeah. too far in that way. Yeah, and yeah, Song yeah. Gang just has that ability to kind of, yeah, like I said, connect and uh, almost communicate with his audience without kind of forcing emotions out of his audience. And I kind of felt that. Yeah, maybe that film did that more so. so. He's like, his acting is real, right? I mean, yeah. that's like one of those things where it doesn't seem like, I, I know that holds true for many really good actors where it just doesn't seem like acting. It just feels like you're yeah. watching what's going on in the world in front of you. Uh, but Song Gang Ho does an excellent job with, uh, he, he does so many different characters. And I think that's the reason why he's been able to do this for such a long time. But your second choice, you, you're saying this is more of an independent film? Uh, but you, well, it opened the Busan Film Festival actually in 1999. Okay, because like I've heard, it's not a commercial. It's not. It's not a commercial movie. But it's very famous, though. Oh uh, yeah, well, it's an iconic film. Yes. It's it's probably one of the most highly regarded Korean films of the last 25 years, along with films like Memories of Murder or Saturday Night yes. And we're talking about Peppermint Candy, yeah. Pakasa Tang. Pakasa Tang, yeah. Uh, this is a movie by Yi Chang Dong. Uh, it stars. Um, so Gyeonggu and Min Sorry. I mean, basically, uh, I'm giving away a spoiler, and I, hes- I hesitate to talk about this, but I guess we're talking about Kwan Ju, so I-, I have no choice. Uh, the reason I say that is because the film, at the beginning of the film, this character played by So Gyeonggu, he basically jumps in front of a train and he says, I want to go back. Um, and so the film is told in reverse. It's told um, through, I think, a total of like seven different, through, yeah, a total of. Uh, seven different segments Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we go back over the course of his life and we realize what led him to jump in front of that train now there are a few things that happened um, by the source of his trauma though the source of his trauma is his role in the may 18th he was a soldier he was conscripted as a soldier and um he was he was very um traumatized just being there and not sure what he was doing and he inadvertently uh, kills uh, a young woman, and it scars him for life. Yeah, and so if you want to, if you want to understand the impact, I think that Kwang Ju has uh, has had on Korean history. I think there's no better film than a peppermint candy. You know, there was a um, was it oh, man? I forgot how many years ago it was. It was it was some quite time ago. Uh, a soldier who yeah. was basically in the same situation as uh, who, what Sar gyung was playing. Uh, he was a soldier, and he was ordered to shoot whoever seems like a threat. And uh, he was very reluctant. You have to understand, many of the soldiers were kind of reluctant. They, you know, they well, this is the character yeah, in, yeah. in Peppermint Candy. He, he, didn't, he clearly didn't want to be there. No, no. Uh, they were siding more with uh, you know, the people, the people of Gwangju. And so I think something had happened, and he had killed one of the protesters, demonstrators, by accident. Um, but it took him years later on. He can't, you know, he's now in, it's clearly uh, somewhere in like his 60s or something like that. And uh, found the family of the victim, uh, went down on his knees and just begged for mercy, uh, explaining what had happened. And so, the, yeah, you're right. I mean, we I don't, didn't hear, I didn't know that was yeah, really moving. Yeah, and so it's, these are the kind of uh, aspects of, I think, uh, the movement itself that we don't hear about, uh, that uh, not all soldiers were kind of part of this. They, they didn't want to be a part of it, but they were ordered to do so. And uh, luckily, there are movies like Pakasatang or uh, Peppermint mm. Mint Candy, yeah, which great, great movie, which is why I kept on going, well, it's like, it's not commercial, but it's so well known, right? Like, it's an independent film uh, that's well, so well known. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, Yi Chang Dong is clearly one of the uh, great Korean filmmakers he made his debut with The Green Fish uh, in 97 and then yeah he made this movie A Peppermint Candy they made uh, Oasis Secret Sunshine Oh my goodness yeah. he, he, he made that film? 
Yeah, that's he, a great film. He, uh, yeah, that's that's a movie literally set not far from where I used to live. Oh yeah, uh, in Ilsan. Yeah, it's uh, set in an yeah, it's, it's it's set in the nineties. It follows it follows this character by played by Hansogu, who comes out of again speaking of the military, yeah. he comes yeah. out of the military service, and he's completely kind of disorientated because this this city is completely transformed. So for any of our listeners out there, if you haven't checked out these movies, it's, it's a great, great watch. Uh, it's always good to watch these uh, yeah. historic films. It's not an easy film to watch. Not, actually, not. none of <laughs> no. Chang Dong's movies, are, that he, 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 you know, his films are not, you know, enjoyable, but they they are masterworks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mentioned how I liked a uh, sports film, Lorelei from Alabama says, uh, SG, did you like Field of Dreams? I actually did not watch Field of Dreams. You've not seen that? I have not watched it. Um... It's weird. I love baseball, but I've not watched a lot I've of baseball I've not seen movies. either, so I mean, there you the go. Perfect Game is a great, great movie if, if you want to check it out. It's actually based on a true story, but kind of dramatized. You know what killed me is I was I was almost in tears when Madong was like hit that home run. Right? Yeah, that's, that's really left an impact on you. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then I go home and I was like, I'm going to find out who this person was. Fake. That never happened. Uh, <laughs> That's not how that famous game went. It's, uh, it's really made, yeah. It's, 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 it completely ruined it for me. So that's that. Jason, as always, thank you very much uh, all for right. your updates on this. Have a safe one. We'll see you again next time. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.